Teja is a lead consultant uh, from ThoughtWorks. Um, uh, he has a blend of business analysis, product management, and a software development background. And he has uh, also been part of uh, some large scale implementations and as well as digital transformation initiatives. And today he's going to talk about why you should know your customer before you build your product. Uh, over to you, Teja. Okay, good, uh, good evening everyone. And I'm pretty excited for this opportunity and it's pleasure speaking at this event. And uh, let me share my screen. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and my topic for today is about knowing your customer before you actually build your product. And uh, I would like to cover three different things and uh, on this particular event and uh, like uh, why you need to know your customer and what you need to know and how it helps you to build a delightful product for your customers. Okay. Uh, before, okay, let's start with uh, uh, like a small guess on uh, 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 let's start with a small guess on like the two most renowned companies and the brands in the world and both of companies will start with A. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure and uh, most of us will be able to uh, find out like guess what those companies are and it's, it's absolutely the Apple and the Amazon. Uh, so Apple and Amazon are the two most valuable companies and also the Steve and Jeff are the most successful uh, entrepreneurs or most successful uh, leaders. And can you guess why? Uh, because both of them are customer centric and also customer obsession leaders. And not just Apple or Amazon, every successful company has one thing in common. They know and they understand who their target customers are and everyone strongly believe Knowing your customers inside out is key and the customers are what actually makes the product successful. And I have seen one interesting job posting by the Uber to hire their product manager and it is like product manager customer obsession. This is just one, one indicator on how companies are focused on building customer centric products. Because at the end, if your customer do not want the product that you build, or if they are not willing to, willing to pay for the product that you build, then how innovative your product are, or how beautiful is your product is, or how well it is designed, the product is going to get failed. And so how we can overcome this uh, particular thing? And then that's where like the customer development comes into picture. We can also call it as customer discovery and we have various models like customer discovery model or customer development model. And customer development model is an approach for gaining an in-depth understanding which starts with your hypothesis of who your customer are and uh, what actually their pain points like problems and what is your solution. And so, so why we need uh, actually the, what the customer development is about is like we will start with an hypothesis for the product that we are going to build who we are actually initially trying to target with our hypothesis. It is not the validated one, but the hypothesis. And uh, we might, uh, we will have our own hypothesis of what problems they have. And we might have an idea, which is an actually a solution, like how we can actually address those problems. We, as a, as a part of customer development model, we will start with that, with the customers that we have on mind and the problems and some solutions. And then we start our journey to explore actually like what our customers are and who we need to sell this product and what they actually need. And this customer development model works well for both uh, the startups as well as established companies because the products that, we, that either startups or established companies build is going to, at the end, going to address the needs of your customers. And uh, there were many things that we can learn about the customer, but uh, I would like to cover a few important details and uh, uh, on how you can actually get an in-depth understanding of your customers. First one, uh, who are they? Who actually your customers are? So it's more about understanding the demographics, like their age, their interest, their jobs, and what income they have. And, uh, uh, and so it's more about like where they live and how, what is their lifestyle. And all this comes as a part of the demographics of the customer. And also like what they do. Are they uh, part of an, uh, what type of occupation they are? Because their occupation actually determines how they are going to use their products. And what are their pain points? Uh, so when I say like pain points, well, currently that customer might be able to, uh, might be able to solve the needs 
either by using your competitor products or by some other way to to address their needs so while they are doing that they might have certain pains which actually we need to understand to address it in a very uh, in a way uh, in a way uh, that we differentiate from our from our competitors and like why actually they need to uh, buy your product from you why not from your competitors when we have in detail understanding what are the pains of the customers and uh, what are they and what are their needs and it will help us to create our own value proposition and our, our, our like unique selling proposition which actually differentiates us with our customers uh, with our competitors and also the next important one is like why usually when you usually your customers is going to buy a product something like uh, the one which you are trying to build because if you see uh, uh, for the, for example we take an insurance uh, policies most of the insurance companies try to reach out to us during the year end or uh, like in the december or in the march because they know that's where the most of the customers will try to buy their policies for either for tax savings or any other purposes so when you actually understand when actually your customer is going to buy it helps you to target your uh, ads or your marketing in such a way so that it will reach out to the customers at the right time so that they can buy the right uh, they can buy your product and next one is on the how they are actually going to buy the product something like you whether they would like to buy it from online or whether they would like to buy from a brick and mortar store or whether they like to buy from a mobile app so if you understand how exactly your customers want to buy your products then it will help you to to define your channel like a, your distribution channel or like your channel and how you make your product available and next one are like what are the various touch points uh, for example if you take uh, uh, in uh, swiggy so what are the various touch points that uh, swiggy has with your customer they will have like when people are hungry when they are during the morning during the lunch time or during the evening and at the same time and they also have a touch points after you after you buy the after you order your food they have a touch point that they assign it to a they assign it to the delivery agent and so there will be a various touch point where actually that the that you as a company or you as a startup can address and make their experience much better and next one is whom they are buying for are they buying for themselves or are they buying for their children or for their family because this actually impacts uh, that the, their decision making uh, for example like if they are buying something for their parents or for their children instead of they see uh, instead of seeing the price they might be more interested to see the value that it adds to their children or to their pa parents and next one is how how you can address their chain their needs need chain for example like now you have a, now we have a situation of covid where we are not able to move out and most of us uh, uh, everything we are trying to address it online so if someone tries to come up with a course which actually conducts in a classroom or uh, does it really work no and if, if now most of us were looking for something which will be available online which we can easily access so it's a continuous process that you need to understand what are the changing needs of your customer so that you can make your product uh, evaluate as well as to uh, to make your product improve and uh, increase the value that your product is going to deliver to your customers so now we have seen like what we need to understand but what is the best way that you can understand your customer uh, not only uh, enterprises like every startup entrepreneur says one thing get out of the building talk and listen to your customers so that is the only way you can address you can understand them and also you can empathize with them on like what are their pains needs and everything so or let's see like uh, uh, what are the some of the tools that can help us uh, to go and talk to your customers and one more thing is like this particular thing when it comes to b2b it is also important uh, to understand your customers because your stakeholders might having a different requirement and when they actually tells you what they want you might have visualized it in a different way so having a constant communication and touch base with your customers and showing like what you understood as well as what they need will all uh, will brings you into a single page and uh, it allows you to build a better output and give the better output to your customers so one such tool that will help us uh, to understand your your customer better is an user persona it's not only okay so the user persona is one such tool which helps actually helps us to understand more about your customer is like what they are about 
and what are they and for example i am here i have taken an e-commerce shopping experience and uh, someone wants to buy a uh, buy a clothes uh, in an e-commerce website so she and lauren is one like she actually loves to shop and she actually spend a fair while browsing sites and find out what are the different options and she wants to search and filter tools that are easy to use so she has certain attributes whereas uh, when you go to some other person they might have in different attributes but we actually try to consolidate a certain group of people into one type of persona and other people into other type of persona and when we are actually trying to talk to your customers you can uh, uh, address the you can frame your questions uh, in related to what are their goals from shopping and e-commerce application and what are their motivations and what are the current pain points which actually helps you to address their pain points in your product and the other one is on the empathy map even though when you are actually talking to your customer they might say something but actually they think and feel something so empathy map is one such tool which actually helps us to understand what actually they say and do and what actually they think and feel and what they see and what they hear at the same time we can also list out what are the pains and the gains that as a customer has while they are having as a lot and having shopping their uh, in the e-commerce website and the other tool is on the customer journey map actually customer journey map actually helps you to identify the various touch points because the journey maps helps you to list out what is the starting of a particular event and what is the ending of an event and what are the various things that as a customer will do in this particular scenario the customers who want to buy in the e-commerce journey map they have a purpose and she lauren has a purpose to buy a gift for the friend the next thing that she do is such what are the various options available then she evaluate from the options available and then finally she make the purchases in each of the stage customer has a different experience as well as the different expectations and also a different opportunities so when we try to find out these details from the customer it gives an understanding on what are the opportunities that we need to address at the same time what are the basic expectation that your customer has and customer discovery is actual and iterative is actually an iterative process uh, you just don't stop while you are actually building the product you are also actually do the customer discovery once you build your solution to validate from them as well as while they are actually using the solution and it's a continuous process uh, uh, we to to our to find out the evolving needs of your customers and as well as new uh, existing as well as new customers and also we we pivot this particular customer discovery process to different types of customers like for example uh, like here we have seen lauren but there might be a she's an employee but the needs and the pains are different for the college student so we do this customer discovery for different types of customers and understand who are the actual customers customer that we need to address first and this is an high level like what is the customer discovery process and this i took it from the customer discovery handbook by alexander cohen and uh, when you actually comes across a new person a persona you will try to find whether they are a new persona or an existing persona and if they are a new persona you will try to draft that persona like the detail that we have seen and then we prepare the questionnaire according to the details of the persona that we have and we have two options here we can either go and spend a time usually this we will do in the b2b phase like where we go and see it's it to take customer support team and understand how they are do so that we can build an effect to customer supporting solution or you can uh, once you prepare the questionnaire or you can directly interview them and test them and see like whether your product is addressing their pains and needs or not so in summary uh, to summary like the in depth understanding of customer not only helps to build the right product to the right persona and also it helps you to market your product in a right way it also helps to cut, customize the customer experience to create loyalty and repeat business so that's all thank you and uh, i have certain uh, uh, like uh, resources which i have used as well as you can uh, go through to do more better customer discovery and one point is customer development process just don't stops at the discovery phase it also goes through in the validation of your solution it also goes through a continuous evaluation on like how actually your product is meeting the needs of your customer thank you well thank you teja i think uh, that's a pretty uh, prescriptive way of doing customer discovery um i think there are some questions that are uh, coming in and maybe i'll just sure. uh, bring them out sure and uh, so 
uh, one of the questions that I see uh, Nahush asks. Uh, uh, so the next, uh, the, the question Nahush asks is, uh, Teja, when do you know uh -huh. enough about your customer? So when, uh, uh, when we know enough about your customer, is like, see, when you start doing the customer discovery, because as we said, we have an hypothesis of who all the personas that we need to address. When you actually start doing the customer discovery, and uh, for suppose you have did a customer discovery for 30 people or 50 people, and you have seen that you have not receiving any new pains or the new needs or the new different uh, new requirements, then it's a type of indication that this one particular persona, we can start pivot with our product and start, uh, they might be our early adopters and can evaluate our product. So uh, are you saying that, uh, you know, usually when you don't learn enough yes. from uh, your customer, which means you start getting enough uh, repeated patterns and repeated information is when you would say that uh, you know enough about your customer and hence you, you can make some conclusions about it, right? Absolutely, yes. And, yes. and, and um, another interesting question that I will bring up from Alpa Jain is um, when you have a small customer base, how do you say no to your customer? So because especially when you are launching a new product and you want early adopter customers, and you spend time uh, trying to understand what uh, needs do they have. But then uh, the more number of people that you talk to like that, they might be giving very different um, needs or pain yeah. points, right? Yeah. So how, do, you, do you as a product manager consider all of those things? Or uh, on, uh, you know, if you have to say no, what is the basis for saying no? Okay, so for that actually it differs from B2C and B2B scenarios. Usually when we go to B2C scenarios, uh, see that is one challenge that every startup will face during their initial while they are building the product and when they are trying to find some customers, they will get a different types of requirements. But one thing is when you are actually decided to pursue a particular idea or want to build a product, you will be preparing your product roadmap or the product vision, like what you exactly want to address. Okay, mm -hmm. and if your requirement or your thing is falling in line with your product roadmap or the product vision, mm -hmm. then you will go ahead and you will do it. Otherwise, we will determine like whether, uh, what is the impact of that particular requirement, whether it requires a huge change from our system or whether it's a huge effort, then we see like, and if it is not going to add value to most of our, most of our customers, then we will say no. But when it comes to B2B scenario, uh, it's more on the driven based on the metrics that we receive because in B2B scenario, when one of our stakeholders has come up with a different, with different stakeholders are coming with, with a different requirements, then we actually see what is the business value that particular requirement is going to address. Is it because every organization has an objectives, they have short term and long term objectives. For example, if there was an uh, uh, objective for increasing a revenue by $5 million in next two years, and if you one of your stakeholder is coming up with a requirement which actually is not directly impacting the objective of your objective of the company then ideally it goes with a low priority and we will try to explain like why it needs to go low priority and if you do not have any other uh, requirements we might take it up but not a, a thing so uh, in the, and also we try to understand like uh, who actually is going to get impacted if that particular requirement was not taken up is it the customer is going to impact or is it your operations team is going to impact or is your front, uh, front office team is going to impact? So it also determines uh, who uh, the impact of different types of personas that we have. And if it is directly impacting your customer, then it will have, surely it will have a priority. But if it is something in your operations team which you can handle manually or which you can have it uh, different uh, uh, work around, then we will take it into a back step. So, so if I were to summarize what you said, focus on creating the customer value yes. and focus on maximizing that value. Many different people may have many different questions and requirements and needs, yes. but try to pick the ones that will address or create value for maximum number of customers. Yes. Is that a fair uh, summary of what you said? Yeah, it's a fair summary. And the thing is like, no, the complexity actually, uh, it will be less complex when it is a B2B because mm. we have a set of object to set company level, which we can tie up and say, why we are going with an another requirement, not with this particular requirement. But when mm -hmm. you actually go with a B2C, it is very hard. 
because mm. uh, one on the one side you need to acquire your customers on the other side that particular requirement will actually changing the part of your uh, the many of other customers that we are having so we'll take that priority bit complex in b2c scenario uh, that's good that's uh, that's a nice summary uh, so before you go teja i you know i i gather that you uh, are running a podcast now and yes. do you want to inform about that to the audience so that they can actually you know subscribe to that podcast and listen to the interviews that you are doing this absolutely. is absolutely time yeah, that, that. that is a wonderful opportunity uh, actually myself along with shriyas we have started a podcast called entrepreneurial minds it mm. is available in all the almost all the podcast uh, platforms and uh, we have actually released our first episode and we are about to release our second episode in the next coming week and mm. this podcast is actually focused on uh sharing the experiences of successful entre- entrepreneurs or the successful people in the established organization and how the students or the aspiring entrepreneurs uh, uh, have who have an idea but don't know how to do or what are the challenges and uh, so this particular podcast is more focused on sharing the experiences for the aspiring entrepreneurs as well as uh, the young entrepreneurs and uh, the name is entrepreneurial minds and uh, uh and and where can people subscribe to that any podcast app which available yes currently we are into like a google podcast castbox we are into anchor and uh, uh, other other platforms are awesome available. awesome so yeah. so a simple way to say they say is wherever you get your podcast we are available yes okay very good uh, excellent and, and thank you for and, that uh, very useful insightful session and by the way i see several questions on customer discovery and yeah. um, um the steps now yeah. what i want to encourage all of you is tonight session 8 to 9 pm is from ash moria the man who created prescriptive way of customer discovery so don't forget to join his session he is going to be much more uh, hands on and prescriptive on it so again thanks a lot uh, teja and thank all you. the best and thank you so much for uh, uh, talking about my podcast also thanks yeah, a welcome I mean, very anything, helpful anything but, uh, that we can help the community is uh, what we should be doing and i see mutu back online over to hey, you mutu thank you hey, th- thank you sir thank you teja hey teja uh, as we just mentioned right so it's it's all it's all for the community right so uh, and the this event is all focused on uh, the community all just like you uh the it's always interesting what the community brings in um, uh, right and all the goodness that we can share with each other as we as we go through this journey uh thank you again